Hi everyone, who have we got joining on the so long? Is there anyone there yet? We're a little bit early. Hi, if you're just starting to join us for today's so long, who have we got? Is anyone online yet? Who's that? Yasmin? Gosh, the writing is small. Lisa's right. Hello. I can't, I can't really see your names, but I saw the message. Thank you. Hi there. Hi, Claire. Yes, yeah, so I've got Rosie with me as well today at a safe distance. Don't worry. She's going to be here on the chat. And in the background shouting things at me in case I forget. Hello! Hello, hello. So we're filming today um, in the Lisa Comfort Home Shop, hence my beautiful backdrop. Check out this nice, uh, nice lamp behind me. Hello! Oh, hi from Cape Town! Hi Val, nice to meet you as well. So, um, welcome everyone to the Pomegranate PJ so long. I've been practicing saying that because all the P's I was struggling with a little bit. Oh, a Stitch School member. Oh, lovely. Thanks for joining. So, um, yeah, today we're going to be sewing up the pomegranate pyjamas, which is our latest poppy and jazz pattern that we released at the weekend. Um, we are going to be sewing it up in this lovely feather dance fabric, which is what I've got here. So we've got anyone sewing along live? with me. I'd be impressed if you are because we only released them on Saturday. So if you've already managed to print out, cut out the pattern, get your fabric ready and cut it all out, I would be impressed. Oh, hi from Sweden. <clears throat> we also released the uh, walnut pyjama, uh, walnut duffel coat on Saturday as well. So maybe you saw that one too. But here we're having pyjama week at Sew Over It because I'm going to be sewing up these pyjamas today. And then Lisa is going to be sewing up the lunar pyjamas, which you may have seen today or last week if you were a PDF Club member. Um, so she's going to be sewing up those tomorrow and Friday. Is that right? Yes, yes. Yes, so pyjama week here. So if you really wanted, if you've got a little one yourself, you could have matching pyjamas in matching fabric. PJ time! Exactly. I mean, especially with all this working from home, I think we can all appreciate a good pair of pyjamas right now. Love the duffel coat. Oh, no little person to sew for. I mean, you could just make a practice one. It's a good first coat to make, to be honest. Just make up a little one, hang it in your wardrobe. It'll look really cute. Someone's made the walnut coat already. Well done, Tina. That is impressive. So let me tell you a little bit about the pyjamas that we're going to be sewing. So it is the pomegranate pyjamas. And as I said, I've got this uh, feather dance fabric here, which is really cute, really nice. So that's a cotton lawn fabric. Um, so cottons work really well for this pattern. Um, they're really easy to work with and obviously very breathable for our little ones to sleep in. So they're a top and bottom set, the pyjamas. I think we probably won't get much uh, we won't, won't get onto the bottoms today, but if you wanted to make a quick Christmas present, you could just sew up the bottoms and not worry about doing the top half. So that's a good option if you want something quick to do. Um, but yeah, we're just going to be starting on the top today. Um, some other nice fabric options that we've got, if you liked our samples that we made up. We've got um, the King of the Jungle, I think it's called. The lovely uh, cotton lawn that... Um, Jasmine sample was made up in and we've got the sprinkles fabric as well that Ezra's sample was made up in. I don't think I've got the names completely right on those but Rosie will pop a link in as well to the fabrics so you can you can check those out. But anyway I think we'll make a start so what I'm going to start first with is the um, pocket kingdom of the cat. Thank you very much. I was close close there but thankfully someone else is paying attention we had someone trying to get in the shop at the same time so I was a little bit distracted there <laughs> sorry about that 
Okay, so we're gonna start off on the pocket here. Um, it's a nice little bit to ease you in. So the pocket piece, you just need to pocket, uh, cut out one and it's gonna go on the left side of the top as it's been worn. So you've got your piece there and we're gonna fold in a few edges on it. And my top tip here is to fold in the edges on your pattern piece first. So I folded in all the edges so I can use this as a pressing guide. And what I've got here as well with me is a little pressing mat, uh, which I bought recently from Lidl. So I'm gonna be giving that a go today. So I'm not ironing directly on the table, don't panic. Um, it is onto the mat. So the first thing you need to do is iron over the top of the pocket. Um, so by one centimeter, and then by two centimeters. I'm missing the chat, but do, do chat amongst yourselves. Where's everyone from on the Sew Along today? So we have Sweden and Cape Town. Where else have we got? Spain. Anne's from Spain. Mm. Denmark. All right, okay, nice international audience today. Northwest London. Not very exotic, <laughs> but you're nicely close. Right, so once you've folded over the top of your, um, of your pocket, we just need to edge to top stitch that in position. So you're stitching about just under, because that top bit's folded two centimetres, just under two centimetres away from the edge. So I like to go with a bit of a longer stitch length for top stitching. So I'm going to go for about three. So just pop these top stitching on there. Seems I've got a problem already. My fabric has got stuck in the machine. Bear with me, guys. There we are, I freed it. That can be a bit, of a bit of an issue sometimes with delicate like cotton lawns and viscoses. Um, sometimes the machine is like to eat them. So what I generally try and avoid, but didn't do there, um, is not to go right to the very edge. And what happened is I went off the edge and back and then the machine went, I'll have some of that. Anyway, I think it's okay, I can iron it out. <clears throat> So if you've got delicate fabrics like that, this, that can happen. So, yeah, we're safe. So we've got our little line of top stitching on there. Ooh, south of France. That's pretty nice. Good wines. So the next thing you would do at this stage is overlock around the edge of your fabric. Um, if you haven't got an overlocker, you could also use a zigzag stitch and go around that with a zigzag stitch. This is probably what I was going to do, but I did a test earlier and again, the machine ate the fabric. So normally, in this instance, I would use some pink shears. I forgot to bring those, so you'll have to imagine that I've pinked the edge. Um, so yeah, if you've got an overlocker, just go around the edge of that. We'll just, just imagine I've done that. Then go back over to your ironing board. And if you have used pinky shears, this is where your template comes in handy. So we're going to press in one centimetre on each side now. So two sides. And when you press in the sides, try and make sure you've got nothing sticking out the top. From Oregon. Hello, is that Lorianne? Hello, Lorianne. Nice of you to join us. <clears throat> and then press up. The bottom. Try not to press your fingers. <clears throat> there we go. And by using my little template there, I've got a lovely straight pocket. I'm just going to just give it another press without the template in.
It's a pretty grey day in London. Has anyone got any snow where they are? Anyone far enough north to get any snow? Ah, oh, thank you, Lorianne. I am actually making these for my little boy. He's, um, he's only 10 months, so this pattern is from ages 18 months to six years. So he's a little bit small for it yet, but next year, fit into these nicely. Got some time. Okay, so I've pressed in my edges there, and then you wanna get your front pattern piece, the left piece. I mean, if you wanted, you could put a pocket on both sides. Extra work, but you know, you could do that if you wanted. And then just gonna pop that in position. So your pattern piece will have circle markings on it. Drizzly Stevenage. Oh. Someone from Australia. I think you said it was sunny there, I missed it. Sorry about that. Stevenage, yes. So yeah, your pattern piece has got circle markings on, so just transfer those onto your actual um, fabric. I've used a combination of things here because I've got different colour fabrics, so it made it a little bit hard to match to mark the fabrics. So I've got one of these friction pens, which you can just iron off. Always test that on your fabric first. And I've also got our wonderful teacher Julie put me onto this, a sew line chalk pen. These are great. Um, you can just make little chalk, really fine chalk markings and then rub them off. So that's, my, that's how I, you get nice positioning there. So position it on um, and then um, pin it into place. What I also like to do here is just glue it down first. So this is a special dressmaker's glue thing that I've got. But you just use a little prit stick and if you just put a little bit of glue on the side first, it just holds it into place. So you can be sure it's not going to shift around too much as you're sewing it. So anyone that knows, in the sewing, uh, my sewing friends that knows me, knows I like a gadget. Rosie will testify to that. So that's my little gadget for this section. I'm going to add some pins in as well. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is just sew around the edge of the pocket. We're going to edge, st edge stitch that into position. And what you can do here, if you have a look at other shirts you've got. Oh, I missed that. It's very small. Um, if you look at other shirts you've got, some of them have got like a little triangle at the top to make it extra strong. So that if you put your hand or something into your pocket, it's less likely to rip off. You've got extra strong stitching. So have a look at some other shirts for inspiration if you want. Now I'm going to do a little triangle at the top. I'm just going to draw on with my pen just to follow and then I'll just edge stitch all the way around the pocket again using a slightly longer stitch length here. <clears throat> so remember to reverse at the start We're just going to lower the speed down because this is uh, it's on speedy mode. Which obviously, when you're sewing something like this, you want to be pretty accurate. So just take it nice and slow. <clears throat> and just leave your needle in when you get to the corner. Mm, I've sewn off. So if you can hear banging in the background, by the way, when we arrived at the shop today, there was some um, guys putting scaffolding up outside and we thought they'd gone home, but I think maybe they just went on their lunch break and they've come back. So if you can hear any banging in the background, that's what that is. Sorry about that. Hopefully it's not too distracting. <clears throat> So just make sure when you get to the corner, my machine here is wanting to sort of eat the fabric a little bit, <clears throat> which can happen with finer fabrics. Um, you can just use a sharp needle helps. So just make sure that's not happening.
So is anyone sewing up any Christmas presents? Or maybe you haven't started yet. Maybe you're a last minute uh, present maker like me. Because these would make a very good present for any little ones you know. Ah, someone's going to... Oh, that's Rosie. <laughs> Rosie's going to make some Luna PJs for her mum. Hope your mum's not watching, Rosie, because that spoils the surprise slightly. <clears throat> I know people are a bit torn with um, making, pe making stuff for other people. Because it's a lot of work, isn't it? And I think sometimes people don't always realise how much work it is. So if you only sew for yourself, it's fine. <clears throat> At least you know how much work you're putting into it. Right, so there we go. One pocket attached. Hopefully you can see that. It's quite camouflaged on the fabric there. But um, not, not a bad job, I'll say. So next thing we need to do is attach, just order my supplies. Is this for the, oh, someone's making a heather dress. In claret red. That red, we've had this red ponty in, which was so popular for the heather dress. And unfortunately, we bought the last stock of it from our supplier, so we're going to try and get some more in, but it's not going to be in for a little while. Um, so, some people were talking there about next week's um, Christmas sew along, which is going to be on the 2nd. And Lisa's going to be sewing up a lovely Christmas garland, so you can buy tickets for that uh, to join us. So the link is, I think Rosie might be able to put it on. She'll put you on the link if you want to come and join us for a little bit of Christmas sewing and some tour kits and nattering. You get the recipe for Lisa's dad's um, mulled wine as well, which I'm very keen to try out. I was pregnant last Christmas, so no mulled wine. So this year I will be having some. <clears throat> All right, um, construction. What I'm doing now, probably should tell you, is I'm sewing the shoulder seams together. So I've got the other front piece here and I've got the back piece. So we're just gonna join them at the shoulders. So pin them together. <clears throat> uh, you might have heard that, that was the scaffold men outside. Still putting more scaffolding up apparently. Oh, someone's just got their tickets. Lovely. So the seam allowance on this pattern is 1.5 centimetres through most of it, um, which is like standard across most of our patterns. So there's a bit around the neck when we do the collar, that's going to be a bit smaller. But I'll let you know when we get to that bit. But for the shoulders, it's just going to be 1.5 centimetres. So I'm just going to put my stitch length back down to about two and a half. I'm going to speed up a little bit. So, yeah. So just sew those, and then the other one. Someone else got their ticket, lovely. I saw said some encouraging words though, I don't know who it was, but thank you, that's very kind. Shoulder seam's done. Um, so if you um, have an overlocker, again, overlock those edges. I'm really sorry if you if you can't hear me over this lovely background noise we've got today, which you didn't expect. So yeah, if you've got an overlocker, overlock those edges. If you've got, um, if your machine's got a nice reliable zigzag, then again, zigzag, stitch it, um, or you could use pinking shears. We'll just pretend I've done one of those. And then I'm just going to press the seams towards 
the back, so press the seam allowance towards the back piece. So far, by the way, guys, I'm enjoying the pressing mat on the table. Like, this is pretty helpful. Because then you don't have to get up all the time. Thank you. Okay, there we are, front and back attached. Um, now we're gonna move on to the collar construction, which is probably the trickiest bit of the, the sewing that we're gonna do. Um, so, I'm just double checking. Yeah, so the first thing we need to do is we need to stay stitch around the neckline. So on the neckline, there's two dots, two circles, you know, I've just ironed one off. There were two circles, I've just ironed one off. I'm gonna to have to put that back on again. Where's my pattern piece? <clears throat> that is the, uh, the problem with the, with the disappearing pens. But it's all right, let's pop it back on. Okay, so I now have again, two circles, one on each side of the neckline. So we're gonna, those points are very important for when we put the collar on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay stitch around the neckline. The seam allowance here is just one centimetre, so I'm going to stay stitch at one centimetre around there. So, just keeping the same stitch there. big Christmas sew along next week we have a selfless sew along coming up some of you may remember in previous years we did some selfish some not selfish sewing <laughs> some selfless sewing we did in previous years we did a selfless sewing month so we're going to do a big selfless sew um, which is going to be are we going to do it on YouTube I think we're going to do it on YouTube yes Rosie's nodding we're going to do it on YouTube and Basically, we want you guys to sew along at home, and what we're going to do is we're going to make some drawstring bags, which we're going to fill with stuff to give to, lots of goodies to give to our local women and children's refuge here in London. So if you're going to be sewing along at home, if you want to join us for that, um, then you can sew up a drawstring bag and just post the drawstring bag to us. Don't worry about filling up with stuff, we will do all that. If you're international, then you might want to make a bag and give it to someone local to you, fill it with some goodies for a neighbour or something like that. But we'll be sure it's sharing more details about that soon. It is going to be on Saturday the 5th of December at 2 o'clock. And Lisa's going to be hosting it. So that will be a really nice thing to do. A little bit of selfless stuff before Christmas. And do something nice for someone else. Yeah, do look out for more details about that. Because I imagine there's probably something I forgot to say. <clears throat> right, there we go. So I've stitched around the neckline. Then I'm just going to put that to one side a second. And retrieve my collar pieces. Is the lunar pyjama suitable for beginners? We would say probably like a confident beginner. Um, what I would definitely, if you were a beginner, what I would do is start off with the pyjama bottoms. Oh, the lunar pyjamas, sorry, I'm talking about the pomegranate pyjamas. Uh, yes, I would say a confident beginner could tackle them. Um, there's no zips, there's no buttons, it's tied with a loop. You can use really stable cotton fabrics. So, yeah. And again, start off with the trousers because the construction's much easier on those. And then you can move on to the top after just to sort of get you into the flow of it. So back on pomegranate pyjamas, it's all the pyjamas. Next thing we are going to do is get one of your collar pieces and on the collar piece there's some little notches like that and we're just going to stay stitch along actually the entire bottom, I'm just checking. I'm going to stay stitch along the entire bottom of my piece here. So just at one centimetre away from the edge. Like so. 
so. And then next thing I'm going to do is where those notches are, I'm going to clip all the way to the line of stitching, but not through the line of stitching. Someone's saying the instructions are very clear. Is that for the lunar pyjamas? Yes. Yeah, it's Nicole's wonderful instructions. She writes, very good instructions. And now we have lovely diagrams for all the patterns as well. So we used to have on, on our older patterns, we used to do photos for the instructions, but now Nicole does all these wonderful little diagrams. I don't know how she does it. It looks like magic to me, but they're so good for um, when you're following along. Right, so I've just cut up to the line of stitching, which means I've got a bit here that I can press up. So that bit in the middle between the two notches, I'm going to press up. And this means that when I sew the collar on, we've got a facing down the front, but there's no facing on the back. So doing this extra little fiddly bit back here, um, so you can see I've pressed that bit up there. That means that we won't need a facing on the back. I enjoyed your teaching on stitch school. Ah, thank you, that's very kind. I couldn't quite see your name there, but thank you for whoever that was. Hopefully uh, you're following along with this okay as well. If you are, if anyone is sewing live, <clears throat> or maybe you're watching it later on. All right, so next thing to do is get your other collar piece and just align the two wrong sides, to, uh, right sides together. Sorry, not wrong sides together, don't do that. Um, so right sides together. We're just going to sew along all the way around this curved edge here with a one centimetre seam allowance. Now something else that I like to do here, if I'm doing a little detail like this, it can be quite difficult to get a smooth line around these corners. So what I'll sometimes do is just draw it in first and then I know what I'm following. So I'm just quickly going to just draw a few lines just at one centimetre. So I know when I get to that curve, but that's what I'm going to follow. So again, I'm doing that with one of these disappearing ink pens. But to be honest, you could use a pencil there. It's going to be on the inside, so no one's going to see. But if you like to try and be extra accurate with your sewing, or just make things a little bit easier for yourself, then that would be my tip. Right, so... Make sure your piece is all nicely aligned and then just pin around the edge. So I've literally only just like drawn in a line just around the, that corner. So how are we doing for time? Is it about half past? Something like that, yes. If you've never sewn a shirt before either, this is probably a good place to start because this pattern doesn't have the, we have a collar stand, so there's just the collar. So it makes it a little bit simpler to sew on. <clears throat> okay, so you're gonna sew around the collar now with one centimeter seam allowance. So something else you can do once you get to the curved edge is to put your stitch length down and that'll just give you a little bit more control when you go around the corner because it means you sort of do more stitches and you can turn more as you go. So I've just put it down to about two and I just continually keep lifting, leaving the needle down and just lifting the lever as I go around. So you only need to just be very careful for that corner and then you can speed up, lengthen your stitch length again. Down the long edge here. This machine does go very fast. And again, I'm coming to the, whoop, gone a bit far there. A little bit too fast. 
So I'm coming up to the other curve, so I'm just going to slow down again and just put my stitch length down. I see some people saying that they're on stitch school and they're enjoying it, so that's good. I'm glad you like using it. If there's certain things you'd like us to do on there, by the way, you think, oh, I've always wondered how you do that. I wish someone would do a video for it. Feel free to email us suggestions and we'll see if we can fit those in. That's info at so over it, .co.uk. Okay, gone all the way around my collar, hopefully neatish. And then the next thing to do is to trim down your seam allowances here. So I'm trimming them about half the thickness. And then what you also want to do is, because it's going to be a little bit difficult to get this to lie flat when we turn it inside out, you want to cut some little notches into this curve <clears throat> so that when we turn everything inside out it's all going to sit nicely so just cut some little notches in be careful when you do that not to cut through your stitching line so just do it on the corners so you're going to have all that fabric bunching up and struggling to lie flat So, someone's making a Freya top. Oh, you made the Freya top. Oh, very nice. What's everyone else sewing at the moment? Have we got anyone sewing up the lunar pyjamas? If you're not making kids ones, are you making some for yourself maybe? Or for another family member? Or friends, if you're feeling, feeling generous? Or maybe just sewing yourself a nice Christmas dress. We are getting into the season. Obviously it's a little bit different Christmas to normal. Right, the next thing we need to do is just press this flat. So I've just turned my collar through. Stitch School would make an excellent Christmas present. I like your thinking, yes. So I've just turned that through to the right side. And now we just want to press these Uh, pressure your collar piece so that that seam allowance is lying right on the edge. So what I do is open up the collar here <clears throat> and I'm just pressing in the middle just to make sure the fabric is pulled apart, if that makes sense. And then I'm just going to roll the fabric. So I'm rolling it slightly to what will be the under collar, rolling the seam line slightly to the back. Like so. So there's your collar piece. Nice smooth edges there, more or less. Okay, next step is to sew the collar onto the top. So, if I remember correctly, so I've got my instructions down here, I'm just having a quick look. Yes, so you want this little bit that we folded up here, this is the top collar, and then this bottom bit here, so that's the under collar, so that we've got notches, remember those little notches we cut earlier, those match up with the shoulder seam. So this can be a little bit fiddly to pin in place because obviously we've got a straight edge here and then this is a very big curve that we're trying to pin to it. So use lots of pins if you need to. You can clip into the seam allowance afterwards as well, which will help it sit flatter. And then the end of your collar, 
wants to align with those circles that you marked earlier on. So this is very important because it means that this front edge extending here will be the same length on both sides. Sorry, I'm just trying to read what you're writing. Keep chatting amongst yourselves though. Well, I'm doing fiddly bits like pinning. So yeah, it's important that you get this accurate on both sides where your collar ends. Because when I, I sewed up both the samples of our pajamas and um, on one pair, I was not accurate. and had to do a bit of unpicking. So just keep your eye on where it's finishing. It can be a little bit difficult to get it to finish exactly on that dot. So I'm just going to add a load of pins in here. And remember, you're only pinning at this point the under collar. You're leaving this top one loose. Like that. So we're only going to be sewing that to the neckline. Because we'll sew the other bit down after. So just use as many pins as you need. If you're a bit nervous about this point as well, you could always baste it into position first. So just use some temporary stitches. Okay, and then we're going to sew all the way along the neckline from one side to the other. But don't sew onto this top collar. So seam allowance again is one centimetre this point. So you just have to be quite accurate about where you start and finish. Oh, there was a question there, I missed it. <laughs> Rosie's just whispering to me. Is it, how old is my little boy? Yes, he's 10 months. 10 months old, so going to be a year soon. It's a bit of a cliche, isn't it? But it does, it does go quickly. It, ge it genuinely does. <laughs> And they do grow up so fast. It's not that more nice cliche for you. So yeah, as I said, he's a little bit small for these at the moment. I mean, he's quite a big chap for his age. But hopefully by next year, he'll be fitting into them. Uh, and I see there's some chatting going on there, guys. So when you're sewing the collar on here, you might find you end up with a few little puckers and things. Don't worry too much about that. You can always just unpick those tiny bits, re-sew it. It's not the end of the world. Because as I said, it is quite difficult sewing that curve to a flat edge. Just sort of feel where the fabric is underneath as you're sewing. And make sure that your seam allowances on the shoulders are staying towards the back. And when we're trying to flip around there. So just when you get to the other side, again, be really careful that you're not going to sew onto that top collar. And we're going to stop at the right point, hopefully. And then just reverse to finish. This machine as well has a nifty little like auto, auto thread cut. Which is why you don't see me cutting the threads because it's doing it for me. It's great if you're uh, feeling a bit lazy. Right, so I've gone around there. This is a good point to check that your collar is at the same distance away from the front edge on both sides. Because if it's not, then later on it's going to be obvious. So you can always unpick. So just double check that it's the same distance away. 
that's pretty good. It's not bad. And like I say, you can just unpick jimmy it about a bit if it's not quite worked out. All right, next step is to cut, well, double check how that's sewn on. Have you got any puckers or anything like that that you need to redo? I think we're okay, I think we're okay. Um, double checking the instructions. I know what I would do next, but I just want to make sure it's the same as what we say to do. Okay, yes. So next thing you want to do is, remember we clipped into those notches earlier on the collar. You're going to do that again on the bottom. Like that. So that we can press everything up. And actually what I'm going to do as well, is I'm going to clip into this neckline a little bit. Because that means it'll, that means it'll sit a bit flatter. So just clipping around the edge up to your stitching line, not through it. Some good sharp little scissors are really helpful here. Then just press up your that bit of the seam allowance. So between the shoulder seams. Sorry, the iron's getting a bit excited on the old seam. It's a little bit of an awkward place to press in there. If you've got a tailor's ham or something like that, sometimes that can be very helpful for getting into those kind of spots. <clears throat> okay, now, so you'll see that, well, hopefully you'll be able to see, I'm not sure. We can just place that little section that I pressed earlier, that I pressed up, you can press, place that over that seam allowance and it'll be all lovely and hidden. And then we're gonna stitch that into position. So we add some pins in here. There will be tiny dots on the screen. I feel like I've missed a bit of chat. <laughs> I know Lisa is able to scroll through your comments, but I can't quite, my arms aren't long enough to reach the screen to be able to scroll through. So, apologies if I'm missing your messages. But as I said, Rosie is here if you want, if you've got any questions that she can help with. Right, so I've pinned that up and I'm just gonna sew along between the shoulder seams here, between those two notches. So this is just edge stitching here. Just right, like about two or three millimeters away from that folded edge. I think I know what you're talking about. Are you talking about on the Zoom? Yes. That you're going to be, that's true, I was thinking that there's going to be so many people on. That you're going to be tiny little, tiny little squares, like a nice big mosaic. Hopefully we'll be able to find out who's, who's there. So just sew over that little section. Nice, like that. And then, You want to just baste, use some basting stitches to baste the rest of your collar into place. So lining up the raw edges of your collar with the bit we sewed earlier, so with the main body. So you can just add some pins in there if you want. 
This is where you need to make sure you've clipped right to the stitching, because <clears throat> otherwise it can be a little bit difficult to turn it through. I'm just going to put a few pins in just so it doesn't shift about while I'm doing it. So just use some basting stitches there. So if you miss me saying at the start, this is a cotton lawn fabric that I'm using and it's called Feather Dance. The link I'm sure Rosie can pop it in and then we've also got a few other cotton lawns as well that will be really perfect for sewing pajamas like this or the lunar pajamas for yourself you could make some lunars out of this that would be pretty jazzy but it's beautiful fabric really really soft okay I'm just going to base the other side in just pop a pin in there Keep my layers together. So when you're basting it, you don't need to use, just go a little bit within the seam allowance. Go about 0.5 centimetres, something like that. Right, so that's all basted in. Next, we need to move on to the facing. So these are our facing pieces. So in the instructions, we don't say to interface the facing pieces because we want to keep the pajamas really nice and light, especially for our little ones. Um, but if you've got quite fine fabric, then you might find you need to interface them so your buttonholes don't end up, you know, a little bit haywire. So the best thing to do is just to do a little test buttonhole first on a couple of pieces of fabric um, just to see how they turn out. If they're looking a bit iffy, then you can always just interface. I've just used a really lightweight interfacing here on the facing pieces just to give it a little bit of extra structure. So first thing to do is just to fold over the top, the shoulder seams of the facing by 1.5 centimetres and then just press those into position. Just keeping an eye on the time here. Oh gosh, we are, we are getting up to the air. So I'm just gonna sew these on. I don't think we'll have time to do much more after that. So I'll try and be quick. So fold them over 1.5 centimeters. So that's wrong sides together. Like that. <clears throat> Maybe I'll just do one side so I can show you. And then you're going to lay out your top. It's difficult to let it get it to lie flat once you've got all your got your collar on, because obviously it's pulling it round. But it will sit really nicely once you've got it on, so don't panic about that. So align your facing with this neck edge here and you'll see that that bit we've just folded over there should match up with the shoulder seam and then you're just going to match up your neck lines so that's just for this bit around the front pin them together So then I'm having to go back to work after this, you're just doing a little bit of like lunchtime light sewing relief, light sewing chat. Or maybe you just stop to have your lunch and watch along or sew along. So just pin that front there and then I'm just going to sew from the front edge all the way up to the shoulder. Again, a one centimetre seam allowance there. Mm, hang on, my machine is eating the fabric again. 
It's 4, 5.47 a.m. I was thinking it's probably earlier, early, wherever you are, Lorianne. That is very early. Are you watching in bed? Hang on. Just have to bear with me, the machine's just eating the fabric again. The machine has obviously decided it's lunchtime, it's hungry. It's today she eat you up. Why not? Why not, eh? Right, I'm just going to start a little bit further in there. And again, if you wanted to, you could reduce your stitch length here. Just to make it easier to go around those curves. Just when you get to the shoulder, be careful that you're not catching any extra fabric. Like so. Yeah, that'll do. And then we've got a little Nicole tip here. So what we're going to do next is sew all the way down the front. So I've just sewn around that little bit of the neckline there. And then I'm going to sew all the way down this front edge next. And Nicole's tip here, and this is to get a lovely nice square when we turn through this front edge, is to fold the seam allowance back so that it's um, facing the, the front body, if, if that makes sense. And then just pin that into position and then we're going to sew over that. So now right at the top there is just the line of stitching and the seam allowance is folded to the back here, yeah? So just pin all the way down. I know some people are a bit of rebels and don't really like to use lots of pins. Is that, is that you and your sewing? Anyone just go for it and not use, not use pins? And you can sometimes do that with sort of quilting fabrics. I think we've got some retirees joining us. That does sound nice. Okay, so just sewing down the front edge now, making sure those seam allowances are still pressed behind. Hello. Ah, oh, someone made it along for the last 10 minutes. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. I'm just sewing the front facing on the pomegranate pyjamas. So as I said, this is kind of the most involved bit of the pattern. So just whiz down the front. going to do is turn so quite often if if you hadn't folded that bit of seam allowance like we did you would clip the corner here but we're not going to do that we're just going to fold it through and hopefully it has worked got a little point turner this used to be my nana's my nana's point turner it's a nice little thing to inherit so just gently tease out that corner. And you are left with a lovely square edge. Hopefully you can see that. Ta-da! So give that all a good press and you want to repeat it for the other side as well. So that it's really nicely faced. If you wanted uh, we haven't added this in the instructions, but if you wanted to, you could also top stitch along that edge. In fact, you know, I'm just going to give it a little press so you can see what it'll look like. So what I would do here is press, I might even just press the seam out to the inside. 
and when you're pressing this edge, you want to think about the fact that the um, the front opens up, so you'll see a different bit of. If you want to try and press your seam allowance just slightly to the inside on the bottom section of the top, and then when you get to the top here, you want to press it slightly towards the front, and that will mean that you won't see that stitch line there. So just roll your fabric slightly as you're pressing it. Hopefully we'll get a lovely corner here. Oh, got a rope thread. Wow. I'm just gonna roll that slightly to the front at the top. Like that. So yeah, you could top stitch along that, or edge stitch along that front edge if you wanted. So that's where we've got up to today. So that person who joined for the last 10 minutes, that's the little bit you saw. So we have attach the collar mostly um, and we've put the facing on so you just need to do the other facing there and just anchor at the shoulders next thing to do would be to add the sleeves the sleeves for this actually go in flat we don't put them in in the round um, so those will go in flat and then we'll sew up the side seams after so you sew up the side seams and then you need to do your hems and then you oh huh. well thank you very much Kim uh, they're not bad are they? It's, it's very nice fabric. Um, and then once you've done your top, or oh, buttonholes, of course, so once you've done your hems and everything, you'd add on your buttons, um, and then you'd move on to your bottoms. So they're really simple to construct because there's no side seam. You've just got your, your inner leg seam. So inner leg seam, then the crotch seam, add your elastic in, do the hem. And there you are. You have one completed pair of pyjamas. So thank you everyone for joining today. I'm just reading some of your comments. Thank you very much, Lorianne. So I hope you've enjoyed joining us today. Thank you. I can't say your name. Joanna and Alisa. Thanks very much, guys. So tune in tomorrow to see Lisa making pyjamas as well, but on a bit of a bigger scale because she's going to be making up the lunar pyjamas. So the lunar pyjamas are out today um, on general release. So maybe you saw them last week if you were in the PDF club. Um, but yeah, so join, join Lisa tomorrow and Friday when she'll be sewing those up. And we hope to see some of your pomegranate pyjamas out in the wild. Have a lovely day, everyone. Bye.